And this mic is live, Jace? Something, well, kinda. <laughs> Just let me know, Michael. All right, all right, cool. So, day two, I think it's gonna be busy today. What do you think? I love this show. Yeah. I really do. I love all the, I love to meet the consumers and talk to them. I love to see the people that I get to only see once or twice a year in the industry. Yep. Um, love seeing you guys again. Um, just, just to really, I just love this show. Well, you know, SHOT Show is an industry show and the, the gun enthusiasts, shooters, hunters, they can't go to that one. Mm. So this one is like, you come in here, it's going like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. Being able it to come into the Remington booth and see all this stuff. Yeah, and, and these are the people that interact with our product at home. Yeah, they love it. And that's what, that's what I like. I like to, if they've got problems, and, I, and uh, of course we don't love that, but um, we, we can work through uh, a lot of those here. And if they've got questions they've always wondered about, I want to yeah. ask those guys from Remington they can, or Marlin, they can come by here and talk yeah. to us about that. I just, that's what I love about The companies it. in this industry really, really care about the products. I was having a conversation yesterday with a guy, and he said, um, it was actually just a listener of the radio show, and he said, you know, I had this, this little issue with a finish on a gun, and I, I went and talked to the company, and hey, you know, stuff happens. This is manufacturing. Yeah. It, it, they can't all be perfect 100% of the time, mm -hmm. although we, tr we try to. Yeah, yeah. And the, he, the company said, pick out a gun, we'll send you a new one. Yeah. It's just like, yeah. done. Yeah, so I, 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 I agree. So there are, there, it is a little difficult, especially when you get a company the size of ours. Um, you know, we're not making one one gun a day. Right. We're not yeah. making one gun a yeah. day. Or, or um, so we we um, we do the very best we can on our quality control, and we we're always looking for better ways to to do it. Yeah. But Just striving to make it better. But, but it's really it's your com it's your relationship with the consumer after they have your firearm that's that's important to us. All right, so we are live. Welcome in. We were just kind of chatting. You've, you're eavesdropping. Uh, Gun Talk Live from the NRA show in Indianapolis. We are on day two, and today we are in the Remington booth all day, the Remington family of companies, right, I guess. Right. We're with Eric Lundgren from Marlin, yep. and we've got some new stuff to talk about. So I'm really excited about this. I think I know the viewers are going to love this stuff. So the Marlin Dark Series. Yes. Let's talk about it. I'm really excited about this. When we concepted this gun um, uh, mid-year last year, mm -hmm. um, it, it was it was a gun that we that we wanted to do that that kind of pushed the envelope of what's acceptable in a traditional lever action platform like a Marlin. And Marlin is one of those foundations of lever actions, and you've seen things over the years because I think we all think lever action very traditional gun. But I feel like over the last, I don't know, five, six years, you guys and, and just lever action enthusiasts have been kind of tweaking lever actions into a new direction. Yeah, we have. We have, you know what, part of that was a few years ago, we did some focus groups all over the country, talked to young people. We wanted to know what they thought of this platform. Mm -hmm. Is it dying? Does it have potential? Sure. And what we found was that young people think that there is a place for a lever action in their collection. Yeah, and, okay. And I said, okay, then we've, we've got some legs here. And then we started asking them questions about pushing the envelope on features. And um, and they're all about pushing the envelope on features. They so they, they are inter interested in lever actions. They maybe want to own a lever action. And once you shoot one, you want it. It's oh yeah. fun. But they don't want granddaddy's lever action. Uh, that's right. Okay. That's right. So so a few years ago, we did some things. Um, like So you've got the excess lever rail yep. here on Full this. Full rail on there. And that's, a, that's something that we use now. But people love this thing. Mm -hmm. um, so on uh, this dark series, obviously we've called it the dark series because we wanted to darken everything on this thing. Blacked we wanted out. to make it blacked out. Yeah. And, <laughs> and so this is kind of a hybrid between some things that we do now have done in the past okay and some things that we have never done before and i notice on this full rail you've also have the ghost ring site that's kind of integrated into it it is it's integrated into it this is an excess lever rail with their excess ghost ring and then we use their excess front um, site post as well great 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 setup um so um, um 
what we're doing on this series is we, we've introduced this in 3030, which okay. is this one down here. Okay. And then we've introduced it in 4570. 4570. I noticed on the 4570, you're you're showing people that you can add a muzzle brake on the, on the uh, air end, uh, kind of control the recoil. Cause uh, that's right. That's a, this is a small, this is a compact package. 4570, I mean, that's a... That's no joke. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Especially when you're using the Magnum full pressure Magnum loads right. with a big fat bullet that 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 can that can uh, jar you. But um, all of these series of guns come threaded. Okay. Um, we here at the NRA show we're showing them uh, showing one non-threaded mm -hmm. with just a cap on it, and then we're we're showing a couple of kind of showing how you might set it up. But of course, this option, this is you know what people think of a lot of times when you talk about threaded. We're talking about putting a suppressor on it. That's right, yeah. And you know what? This has been, I mean, we, we have been getting a lot of pressure and people wondering, why in the world are you not doing that? <laughs> you've got, you've got a, a, a platform that's it's not a semi-auto where an action, exactly. is, is action is moving. It is as quiet as, as it can be. Now, we've got one like this in a 38, uh, 357 oh. right now. And if you've never shot a oh. lever in 38, it is so much fun. Sweet. It takes a recoil completely away, and you, you don't, you almost don't hear it. Yeah, so. no recoil. Yeah, if you put a can on it, super quiet, and mm -hmm. probably even less recoil, whatever. The, and oh, then, yeah. But you've got a longer barrel, so you're maybe maximizing as, as much velocity and energy as you can out of the, out of the round. You do. You do. I don't know why anybody doesn't want to use a silencer, because they are fantastic. They do nothing but help you. It, it lengthens the barrel, which is one of the reasons why we wanted this to be a really super short barrel. It's as short as we can do it. We do them all at, at 16 and a quarter. Okay. Um, and so when you do get a uh, when you do get a silencer on there, it's not unwieldy. Right. Still, still, a, still not a crazy long package. No. Here. And like you were kind of alluding to, you putting a silencer on a lever gun changes things because yes, if you shot a silencer on an AR-15 or something like that, it's great. But you do have the action. Wow, 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 wow. This can be very quiet because yep. you basically it's like a bolt gun or a single action a single shot gun. that's right it's exactly you right. don't you don't you don't have the action running if you don't need to that's right um but you know what people love about lever action guns is they're just they're kind of a throwback i mean they're the original um you know modern sporting rifle mm -hmm. really that's right yeah i mean being able to shoot quick um you, you put the big <coughs> the big lever on here mm -hmm. i'll tell you the the cycling speed is much much faster than a bolt action obviously but sure. i mean it is um once you get once you get the hang of your gun you can cycle these things as as just super super fast yeah hey so Larry, let me tell you some uh, more features about this gun okay. so so we've seen some of the things that we've done before um we've worked with the custom shop and some of the things that they do that what we could do um pull into our uh into our um uh, production gun of course, lots and lots of people putting paracord right. uh, on the lever. It it makes it a little bit smaller for people who have smaller hands. Uh, makes it a little easier on the back of your sure hand. Sure, smooth when mm -hmm. you're running it. A little, a little smoother. Um, so we so we decided to add that in. Um, you can see here, this has got a paracord um, sling on it. And we're sending. And it comes with the sling. It comes with the sling. Okay. Um, it says 65 <laughs> feet. 65 feet of paracord. 65 feet of paracord. So you can you can MacGyver yourself to to, <laughs> to whatever <laughs> solution right. you need in the middle of the woods. You never know. Um, here's one other thing that we've done differently that we have never done on a Marlin before. The, this is a Parkerized finish. Okay. Um, durable finish. It, it's a durable finish that resists rust m much more than our a black oxide finish okay. or something like that. So we didn't want the gun to be polished. I wanted it to be a matte finish, yeah. but I wanted a finish that was a little bit more durable than a black oxide. So um, so that's why we went with the uh, with the Parkerized finish here. Kind of staying with that blacked out theme. Yep, it's the blacked out theme. So, and of course we've used the black extractor and we've blacked out the bolt as well. You're um, also telling me about <laughs> something that's a it's a small detail but the lever action guys will go, "Wait a minute. What what you guys do here?" Yeah. So, Ryan, this is this was a big bone of contention inside you the company. Having well, a we debates really about were cuz we've got traditionalists like I I'm, I wouldn't say I'm a complete traditionalist, but I'm a traditionalist. And we talked about whether or not we were going to use Torx head screws okay. um, to assemble this gun. I think we had some people freaking out a little bit. Versus Allen 
versus our flathead or screws flathead that we've done that, else. that we've done forever sure. in, in Marlins back you know um, a very very long time ago 150 years ago well, Torx Torx head screws is kind of the modern way to do a lot of things it's, it is it's, it's common in manufacturing now but what does it do and what does it do for you and why did you choose that well uh, from a manufacturing perspective um, we we damage a lot of parts um, when we're trying to run um, our electronic uh, uh, screwdrivers and oh, that type sure. of thing um, using flatheads. Sure. I mean, we scratch up a lot of receivers that have to go back through um, to be... Well, to that, that would be true for even just the, the guy who gets a gun. Well, that's true. Right? Abs absolutely. Absolutely. So if a guy, you know, wants to, you know, d you know, do take his uh, take his lever out. Mm -hmm. um, is it much less chance of uh, make uh, scratching up his surface here with a with a head of a um, screwdriver? Just so a, a more sure connection. Yeah. Uh, when you're working on the gun. So, but I, I will say, and I have I have assured some of our traditionalists that uh, some of our wood guns that right now this is the only gun these are going on. <laughs> They, and, no, and don't panic. Yeah, do, yeah don't <laughs> panic. Don't panic. And, and uh, I know I, I, I've, 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 uh, the plant has promised, the plant has promised that um, they're never going to mix up um, Torx head screws with uh, with our flat head screws and guns Different that we series. Do. Don't worry. It's like a, 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 we're going to have a big problem there. But uh, but anyway, it is new. It's um, um, this was the one, I know this sounds crazy, this was the one I was most worried about on this gun. Really? Yeah, because that, that it, it is that is that much of a departure. I, I think if you put Torx head screws on something like uh, one of our high polished, you know, limited guns with sure. C-grade walnut, I think peop it's, it's a little bit anachronistic. Um, it's it's like putting spinners on a buggy, <laughs> and and I and I didn't I, I think though that w for a gun like this it's perfectly appropriate. It is well. This is the modernized version. So, um, for people who either they're lever action enthusiasts or this probably I think for a lot of people maybe it makes them go you know what okay now I think I want to get a lever action and gun. I and you know what we we've started off with two of the most popular cartridges, but the the we are preparing. We are preparing the 444. Mm -hmm. We're preparing the 357 38. The 44 Rem Mag, 44 Smith Wesson Special. Yeah. And um, and I shouldn't let the cat out of the bag here, but I will. Uh, and, uh -oh. the and the 410. And the 410. 410 so shotgun shell. In in um, in this configuration here. So. <laughs> That's that gonna be would cool. be super cool. Jace is going, yeah, me. That's <laughs> me, all me, baby. Now that one's going to have to have an 18-inch barrel, right? It does, yeah. Okay, we've got to have an. And that's the big difference. It's not going to be threaded. Okay. And it's not going to be an 18-inch barrel. But otherwise, it'll share all the same features. What's really cool about <coughs> this package, this short lever action package in the Stark series, to me, is it's so incredibly versatile. Oh yeah. I mean, if if somebody says, I'm not a hunter, but I want to go shoot stuff and I want to put a red dot on top, I want to use it for our home defense protection, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, a 30-30 um, is, you know, a, a much bigger bullet than a 223. Oh, yeah. And yeah. if you say, no, I want to take this out, and this is going to be my little woods walking gun for hunting for hogs, for deer, whatever, great. This could be an Alaska gun. Oh, yeah. 45-70? Yeah, the 45-70 is an incredibly versatile round. And, and it is, it's all about bullet selection and mm -hmm. cartridge selection um, because uh, your low-pressure rounds that have soft points um, are not appropriate for everything. Sure. Um, but you have hard cast bullets and magnum rounds like um, Buffalo Bore makes one. Uh, Barnes Bullets makes a very good 300 grain. Yep. Um, and then, of course, Remington makes a, um, a 405 grain uh, oh, bullet that's high pressure. That's like yeah. throwing a freaking bowling ball down <laughs> the <laughs> barrel. That's huge. <laughs> it is. But I, that's why I love the 4570. The versatility is just great. Yeah. Okay. So Marlin Dark Series. Um, when are these going to be available? Um, the 336 is um, is released, and okay. we are we're going to start building these in in higher quantities up front. So you'll see we'll see um, us ramping up um, uh, late this month or early July uh, May, okay. and then you'll see them kind of rolling in through the summer. Start seeing them trickling into stores late May, early June, something well, like that. Well, I mean, you'll s we'll s we'll have a lot of them in there by okay. by um, early June and late July. 
Um, and then and then the 4570, we're going to make a, a big chunk of them um, the first month. Um, you'll see them by the end of May. And then, right. we, then we're at the end of July and August. We start blowing them out in production for the rest of the year. All right. So check it out. Uh, Marlin Dark Series. I got to tell you, this is an exciting one. I know that our audience is going to love this. Um, and if you have any comments or questions, please leave them. And I know we'll be answering it on the Gun Talk pages, and Marlon will be uh, monitoring that, so answering any questions you have. But thanks for watching Gun Talk Live. We'll be back in a little bit with more from the Remington booth.